Hey everyone, it's Jared, and I've been seeing these videos on YouTube where drummers are reacting to their progress over the course of 10 and 20 years. Now, I've been putting content online for 17 years. I put up my first YouTube video in 2006. And in 2009, I created a package called Successful Drumming. And it was a very different time back then. This was before Drumio was even created. The Drumio brand wasn't even around at this time. So I created this package, which was called Successful Drumming, meant to give drummers a great foundation of theory and technique. And I really wanted to focus on some of the musical applications of this. So we went into the studio, we spent a week or two creating a bunch of play-alongs. And this one song I created was called Challenge Accepted. And it was a really kind of harder tune with some weird shots and some weird parts, and it was meant to sound like it was supposed to be in a video game. And it was definitely a song that was supposed to challenge me. And I remember back then just spending so long on making sure it was perfect because we were renting a studio. It was like thousands of dollars every day. I had to hire a film crew, and I just remember adding up the hourly cost of what I was paying for this and just being like blown away, wondering how am I gonna pay for all this. So I'm excited to check it out now, and I can tell you a little bit more about that whole process, and then I'm gonna actually play that again in our studio here at Drumio with all these amazing video editors and this amazing new equipment, and we can see which one do you like better. So let's check it out. But before we do that, please just subscribe to this channel because we are talking about everything drums here, and if you are a drummer, you need to be in this community. All right, let's get going. Ah, the old DW kit. This was my dream kit, okay? This is a DW Mappa Burl Exotic. And I remember when I got it, you know, you just smell the drums. <laughs> it smelled so good. And I also got all these new uh, Peisty cymbals specifically for this shoot. I think I was working with Peisty then, but I'm not quite sure. These 14-inch custom hats were amazing. They don't make them anymore. But you can hear the tune, right? It's kind of got this weird keyboard vibe to it. And it was meant to do some more like fusion style drumming. So I was experimenting with like creating patterns um, that kind of tag on one to another and trying to create some flow within my drumming. I practiced this song so much at the time, <laughs> just trying to make sure that I wouldn't waste anyone's time. So this shoot, like, like you can see the studio where we're in, like the beautiful hardware, beautiful carpets. We had like a, a moving jib cam. I just remember, like right there, I think that was a moving jib cam. Oh no, it's this one, this shot. But I just remember thinking, every time this guy's doing his slow movements, bending down, going up really high, I remember thinking, oh, I hope I don't make a mistake. Because if I make a mistake, he's gonna be super mad that he has to do this all over again. So this, I just remember playing this song probably like 100 or 200 times before the shoot. And then I think during the shoot, I maybe did three takes and that's it. Yeah, so you'll, you'll see a lot of like the, the stuff I was practicing then was stringing these rudiments together and making sure that I could, I could uh, actually play it comfortably without seeming super tense. A lot of the feedback I was getting from my teachers at the time was like, I'm just way too tense. And I think I'm still that way now. I bet you I don't, I didn't, I don't smile at all. <laughs> very, very focused. You know, it's not, I don't think it sounds that bad. It definitely, you can definitely hear that the timing isn't perfect. The bass drum is, is always rushed or behind. So I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna like this version better than the, the older one. Okay, this is, this is the cool part. So the shots, I'm gonna count one, and then the ah. Right? One, three, four, three, four. One, two, three. Or oh, on the E's. One, two, E. One. <laughs> And then the end. I just, if I could make it through that part, I remember just thinking, uh, I got it. That was the hardest part of the whole song. And you'll notice even now when I play it, I still mess up constantly. I think one thing that I would have, I'm probably gonna do differently now is 
I won't play so much random stuff. I'll probably choose more of a part and land on that. I think I was definitely trying to prove myself here. You know, I haven't played in any huge mainstream bands or anything like that. So this content going out was like, hey, you want to learn from me? This is, this is my drumming, right? And so I remember being very self-conscious about making sure that my drumming sounded good, the performance was entertaining, and it was technically right. I remember th just caring about technique so much. And now it's like, I definitely care about technique, but it's just different. Cool. <sighs> All right, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but you could definitely see where my focus was. And you could definitely see I was focused, but I don't know if much has changed. I still don't smile a ton when I'm playing because I'm just really concentrating on things. I, I feel like this drumming has never really come that natural to me. I always have to really, really focus on what I'm doing. But I was so technically focused, and now, you know, modern days, today, I am trying to focus more on my musicality, my vocabulary, you know, how the drums actually sound and how they interact with the music. And then the parts that I'm creating and do they fit perfectly with that. So now I'm gonna play it on this kit. And this kit is very different from that kit, okay? It's not a DW Exotic. This is a pre-DW. This is a 1964 Camco Oakland Lawn drum set with a Ludwig steel snare drum. And so I wanted to do something a little bit different and very contrasting because I've been playing a smaller kit lately and I've been really, really getting into it. And so I'm interested to see what changes with this tune, with a smaller kit, with my drumming after 10 plus years, how will it sound? How will it be any different? Will it be better? Will it be worse? I think you can all be the judges of that. Let's go.
So there you have it. There is my drumming progress in 10 years. I'm really, really interested to know which one you like better. I'm sure some people will like the old school take and some people will prefer the new school take. You'll see some of the things that I was doing differently. One of them was trying to create more parts that are somewhat melodic and that repeat themselves so people can, you know, when they're listening to the music, I create music so people can listen to it. When they're listening to it, they can really kind of uh, get a sense for how that song sounds and there, there's a pattern that repeats itself so they have something to latch on to melodically. And that's what I was going for here. I even incorporated a little bit of cowbell, which I thought was fun. Not too little, not too much. So one of the biggest things that I've learned that impacted my take today as opposed to 10 years ago is that it's not all about flashy fills or it's not all about um, trying to do something technically good on the drums. It's really playing the drums in a way that matches the music in the best way possible. And this is a personal preference, right? I might like something, you might not like something, that's totally fine. But I think today I'm making more musically disciplined choices than I made way back in the day when I felt like I had to prove something. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more I stop caring as much about what other people think and really just wanna do the right thing. And I just really wanna do the right thing musically. So I'd really encourage you to film yourself Put it online or just keep it in a hard drive in your house or keep it on your phone. So 10 years from now, you can go back and look at that and just see your progress. It's so motivating to do that. Or if you have a video from many years ago, record the same version of that song in today's time and see what you like better. See how much you've improved. I think you're gonna be really surprised at your progress and really motivated to continue pushing to become a better drummer. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. We're discussing all things drumming and we'd love to have you as a part of our community.